All right, so to save us a little bit of time for this second LOPS tutorial, I want to just cut to the chase and talk about the instancing portion. Talk about the stage manager, how to instance things along points. You'll notice that in this build here, let me go to the very bottom, we have this, the duplicate, set variant, shelves. What I've found on my end after following this is that it's really not, um, I'm not sure why the set variant was there in the first place. When I went through the steps, I end up with one shelf. So the duplicate works fine, but as soon as I set a variant, it's just this. So for the time being, we're not going to set that as a variant and we're going to move forward with just bringing in the bookshelf. Again, I'm using a reference node to bring that in. And then with this duplicate, what you have to know about that is you just say source primitives, that's what you want to copy. In this case, I'm going to copy the original left shelf. I say source primitives are first duplicates. That means the left shelf is what I'm trying to duplicate. I check on the separate source and destination primitive so that it creates this right shelf down there. Destination, this all lives under bookshelves, which is right here in the scene graph tree. And then the name of the actual duplicate is uh, right shelf. So that's what that guy is named. Let's now get to instancing. Here's how you instance stuff. Make an instancer right there. And then make a stage manager. A stage manager is a very convenient way of bringing stuff into your LopNet. It's a very convenient way of reading USD files and assembling stuff for LOPs. So as an example here, I actually have already set this up over here to save us some more time. I went through, I clicked this icon, and I browsed for herb jars, and I browsed for uh, clay jars right there. So two USD files that have different variants to them. Now check this out. Let me just actually do this from scratch again. So let's say that I just brought it in these jars. You can just drag them in. So for clay jars, I can just go like that. You can set your variants by clicking this icon and it gives you a little drop down to select what variant you want. If I set my visibility right here to the stage manager, you'll notice that it's importing all of these instances on the origin. So like I said right here, we can select what version of or not what version, what variant of this clay jar that we'd like. If you press Control D, that will make a duplicate. And we can go through and select all the different variants so that we bring in really quickly four jars. And then we'll do the same thing for the herb jar. So there's three varieties. Let's go herb jar two and then herb jar three. These are going to be all the various things that we try to instance. Now, once we bring this in with the stage manager, the next thing to do is to create a collection. So create a collection. And this collection node is trying to bring in stuff that you've specified in the stage manager. And it does that through an expression. So down here at this primitive pattern, whatever expression you put in here is what tells the collection what it should include. If you want to exclude stuff, you can also say add exclusions. And now you can also make rules for excluding things. In this case, everything is pretty straightforward. So if we just do this dropdown, we can say all mesh primitives as like a, a preset. And then that will do the trick. Another way that you can do this is by setting a group within the stage manager that <laughs> collects everything that you're bringing in. So under the stage manager here, highlight this very top bar press the plus icon. This will make a new child. And let's just call this our jars. Now we can shift click to highlight. And then everything now is a child of this group. You could see that down here in the scene graph tree of jars. Once we have this, once we have our scene graph tree set up like this, now we can say under primitive pattern forward slash jars forward slash star. 
And that star means take everything that lives under jars and include that. And that is how you would go about doing that. Now, another thing here is with the primitive path, you can say collections like that. And you'll notice that that, that this collection information, this, you know, bit of code that is saying, hey, this is the collection. You can see where that code lives in the actual scene graph tree. So we could put it right there. And that's fine for right now. With this collection name though, let's call this our jars collect right there. And then also, I think that is all we need right there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So there is our collection one. In the next video, we'll go over the instancer node.